What's up, everybody? We are back. Uh, it is post show. We are two weeks post show from the Battle of the River, blah, blah, blah. The show doesn't matter anymore. We're on to the next phase now. I got to put up some new graphics for what this is going to look like. I don't know. I'll worry about that in the edit after this. Right now, we have some work to do. So I am, as you can see, back home. It's great to be back home. I have done very little post show. Breaking it down, the show was June 8th. Today is June 23rd, so I'm 15 days post-show. The day after the show, I flew out to Oregon. I was there for nine days. I've been back here since Wednesday. I'm recording this Sunday. Wednesday the 18th, 19th, something like that. It's now the 23rd, so I've only been back here a handful of days. Um, I did a couple of half-assed workouts in Oregon. I made one trip to the gym, which was pretty half-assed since I've been here as well. Taking um, the weekend off, probably taking Monday and Tuesday off to just kind of like decompress a little bit, give my brain a little bit of time to catch up. I've been sleeping a lot. I've been taking a lot of naps. I've been eating more. Weight's up. I don't know where I haven't stepped on the scale once except accidentally, and I wish I hadn't. So that was kind of ugly. I'm not even going to tell you what that number is. Yeah, I will. It was 227 from, you know, I was 201 the day before the show. Now that was later in the day and I'd like really, really like kind of overdone it that day. Um, so I would guess realistically on morning weight right now is probably around 215, 216 ish, something like that, just based on how I feel. I'm not really too worried about it. Like I'm fine with it, whatever. I don't care. We're moving on. So today, what I want to focus on here is the most important thing that you can do post show. And what we are going to dive in on here is a needs analysis and I am going to come up with kind of a priority list for what this next phase is going to look like. Even though I don't necessarily have a target for like, when is a next show or a next cut? I'm not worried about that right now. There's work to be done. There's improvements to be made. So I want to focus on what those are supposed to be, get the priorities squared away. So what do we do? Well, we look at your photos um, from, from the stage. So first up, um, what I will tell you, <laughs> We're going to look at some of these photos here. I, I'm not thrilled with them with because I, I part of it is I know how I felt on show day. And so I see that in the photos as well. I don't know if it's obvious to anybody else. It's pretty obvious to me. But uh, it's hard for me to look at these. Uh, hopefully it won't be too hard for you to look at them. If so, apologies. But you just need to kind of like swallow that pill and roll with it. So that's what I'm going to do here. Um, now, all of these photos are from the routine performed at finals. The problem with this is I had a rough idea for what I wanted to do. I did not practice this routine once before going into it. So a lot of these poses suck. Like when I was doing the mandatory um, quarter turns and the mandatory poses with the groups, I felt like my posing was pretty good. Here, I was thinking like, what am I going to do? I'm going to walk over here. Okay, what's the music doing? Okay, I'm supposed to be over here now. What are, and so like I hit some of these poses like they're not even close to correct. So. Um, I'm kind of grading myself on a, a generous curve here, and I'm going to be ignoring some of the posing deficiencies that are very obvious in some of these. So I would ask for your grace in extending that to me as well as we look at some of these. So I'm just going to pull them up here. These are in uh, no particular order, but we're going to see what we got here. So first one here um, is an abdominal thigh shot. So uh, what we can do is kind of break down strengths and weaknesses, and I'm going to try also and not over over analyze like oh i'm not lean enough here etc like you know what we want to do is know where i was like this is 201 on show day um i weighed in at 205 206 something like that and it was probably closer to like 209 210 here for finals or something like that so realistically i have plenty of room still with the cap being at 209 like i can put on a lot more size but I also need to come in leaner than this. So um, I'm just kind of knowing that going into it. Um, the first thing that I see here is I actually remember to flex my legs in this shot, which was great. You'll see plenty of them going forward where I forgot to do that. Um, leg size is okay. Leg separation is okay. Nothing really stands out there. Um, the serratus look good in this abdominal thigh shot. The um, rectus abdominis are really kind of washed out, and I'm really noticing the hernia. Um, I will, there, there's two of them. There's a ventral hernia and a small umbilical one there as well. Those have been around for a long time. Fact is, they're kind of starting to bug me a little bit. So, and by bug me, I mean like visually, they're starting to bug me. Like they feel fine. Um, you know, it's 
it's something that I have to work around in the gym. I have to really be mindful of my intra-abdominal pressure. So that's going to impact a lot of my compound exercises, especially for legs, squat patterns, those kind of things. I need to be very cognizant of my breathing on those. Um, so I feel like the, the, I don't do a lot of direct ab training. I think you can probably see it here realistically. If I was a little bit leaner, um, a little bit less distended just cause I knew how off my stomach was here as well. Um, I think you could probably come out a little bit more. I think I could probably stand to do a little bit more rectus abdominis, like those serratus that are in there. I do nothing for those at all. Um, the obliques, nothing. So, um, you just have to be lean enough and have a, a little bit of tissue there. You don't need a lot. Um, the pecs here look underdeveloped. We'll see how they look elsewhere. Arms look fine. Lats look okay. You could always stand to have a little bit more. Honestly, like the legs are really kind of the best part of this shot. I would love it if the waist was a little bit tighter. Um, I did really slack on my vacuum work um, leading into this. So I think it shows here also, if I'm being totally honest. Next up, kind of some half-assed side chest shot here. I don't know why my feet are like this. Um, so again, leg separation from here, like the quad to hamstring separation is okay. There's a little bit of a glute line here as well. Like the chest looks a little fuller here. The delts look okay. Arms are okay ish. Not really a point of emphasis. Um, I'm, I'm okay with this actually. This doesn't look too bad. Um, I would like to be, you know, again, a little bit leaner, um, just because I'd like the legs to be a little bit sharper than that. Um, but the way the chest is engaged, I mean, I could nitpick the posing all day long, but like the body parts there. I think so I don't really have too many problems with this um, shoulders look good pretty happy with that overall so that's decent uh, back to the bicep shot here so first thing that jumps out as me out at me here is like man hamstrings don't have a lot of size but they got some gnarliness going on that's kind of cool um, glutes suck um, part of it is the way the trunks sit on me part of it is just I, I lack glutes I don't really have a lot going on there so um, I'm not thrilled with how the lower back looks here. Um, just, you know, just above the posing trunk line is there's enough there. It's soft. There's plenty to pinch there. Um, this is the best my back has looked, which is saying quite a bit because it still doesn't look that great. Like the lats really need to come up still. Um, the spinal erectors are lacking the back thickness here though. Like the mid trap and lower trap area is the best it's ever been. Um, cause I really, really worked on it. I, like you, you should have seen it before. It was bad. It was bad. So when I say this is the best it's ever been, I'm not saying like I made it. I'm saying like, Hey, it is no longer ass. <laughs> it doesn't suck anymore. Arms and shoulders look good here. Fine with that. So, um, I would love a little bit more size on the hamstrings. I'd love to come in a little bit tighter in the midsection and also just lower back. And I still think like lat width and, and mid lower trap area still needs to come up more for sure. Just a little bit more thickness and density in the back overall. Uh, favorite classic pose. Is this my favorite? No, it's not, but it's the one that I picked. Um, it looks okay. I mean, it's fine. Um, legs are kind of there. Um, quads just really need to come up. Um, they look okay. They look balanced. Uh, but ultimately when you're looking for symmetry and classic physique, what you really want is for certain things to be a little bit more dominant. Like you want your legs to stand out and if they stand out, that's balanced. So here they are kind of underbalanced in that they look appropriate. You want them to look inappropriate in a way. <laughs> um, again, midsection, I'm kind of happy with um, the separation between the rectus abdominis and the obliques. I think that looks good. I'd love for the rectus to be more pronounced. Again, serratus look good. It looks good. Chest is just getting stretched out here. I think we've seen elsewhere that it's fine. Um, the lats look okay here. Arms look fine too. So it's not too bad. Um, front double bicep. Um, once again, the legs, I mean, there's not much here that we didn't see in the previous pose. Um, the hernia once again is bugging me there. Um, I would love just a little bit more like the lower lats look good. Um, the upper lats and the terrace major, I like a little bit more there for sure. Um, arms are fine, which is funny cause I slacked off on arm training for most of this prep. I just didn't, I did the bare minimum, um, just to retain tissue as best I could. So, um, legs still like, they look fine. They, they just, you know, they, they don't have any wow factor to them at all. So that's what I'm thinking here. So, um, basically what I could do is the, the correct way to do a needs analysis is you look at all the poses. And if you're just recording yourself, you could then take a transcript of that and throw it into a word cloud and see which words come up the most. And that's what you need to focus on the most. <laughs> I'm not going to do all that, but that would be one way to do it. Um, this is another pose I, I throw, I threw in here just, um, again, I don't know what I'm doing here. Uh, <laughs> 
<laughs> just I thought it might show something else. It doesn't really show anything that we didn't already see on the um, on the front double bicep shot. So um, there are two more. Let's take a look here. So this was another one that was like favorite classic pose, and I had never done this one before actually trying it in the routine here. Uh, legs aren't flexed. Um, again, we're not really seeing anything here that we haven't seen elsewhere. Um, and then finally here, um, did a front lat spread. And again, I'm, I'm on my tiptoes here, um, trying not to fall over so legs are completely unflexed. Um, what's the main thing we learned from this? Practice your fucking routine before you do it. It's not scored, and so I don't really care about it, but knowing that those are the only photos that are gonna get taken here, it's like, I wish I had put a little bit more thought into this just for that reason, realistically. Um, this pose, uh, I mean, I practiced this when I, when I worked with Bino, he had me do lat spreads, he had me do bodybuilding poses. I'm fine with it, I know how to do them, you just couldn't tell based on this here. Um, Cause like my shoulders look really small here. Um, and I think, you know, I, I'm taking that into consideration also that these aren't all standard poses and I just kind of know from looking at myself the things that I need to focus on and the things that I need to work on here. So, um, so that is it. Those are the poses. So now um, what I will do is take a post-it note and we'll, what we want to do now are write down your strengths which I will just mark with a plus sign, your weaknesses, and your okays. So I've got three columns here. So um, strengths, what would I say strengths are? And we're not gonna get too detailed as far as like, well, like the thickness in this body part is okay, but the overall size isn't or vice versa. It's just like muscle groups, that's all we're putting here. So um, for strengths, I would say arms. Um, I would say serratus, except, you know, I'll write it down. I'm just going to give myself kudos. It's allowed, right? Because um, they, they're just, you know, when you get lean enough, they're just there. And that's great. So um, I think chest overall is fine. It's certainly not an area of concern. Um, and uh, I, I would say also calves. Didn't mention that in any of the uh, photos there, but the calves are fine. They just don't really need a lot of work. Or at least there are things that need a lot more work than they do. They're just very low on the priority list. I would also say forearms are a strength. It didn't come through in the photos at all, but um, the one thing that people always ask me is, how do you get your forearms like that? And I've never done a single set of a forearm exercise in my life, I don't think. Uh, it's, it's genetics, and it's 35 years of playing piano with bad technique. Just like really, really tense all the time. So um, that's, that's the secret. Just do that. You'll be fine. Um, things that are okay, I think it'd be delts, realistically. I think hamstrings are okay. Um, certainly not great. The detail, like when they leaned out, they were, you know, the detail was there. That was good. Um, they could always be bigger. And, you know, I, I am, it would just feel wrong to put hamstrings in the strength column for me, just because nothing below the waist really can be in the strength column. Might have to edit that out. Um, <laughs> uh, what else is okay? Um, yeah, not much. I think I think really just delts and hamstrings are okay. Um, things that need work: um, quads. You know, uh, they look fine, right? But like I said, if they're not overdeveloped, they're underdeveloped. Um, it just in terms of what symmetry means in the competitive bodybuilding landscape. They've got to be dominant. Um, and they're just not. They're, they're not too far off, but they definitely, you know, as far as areas where I could put on an extra couple of pounds, quads all the way, absolutely. Um, next would be back. Um, and back has really been a point of emphasis for me between now and the last show. It's really come up a lot, but it needs to continue to come up more. So again, um, you know, I weighed in at 201. Well, I, you know, I weighed in at 205. Um, so I've got realistically like eh, four or five pounds of space to play with under the cap. Um, and that being the case, I could, you know, if I threw four or five pounds on between quads and back, that would be okay with me. That would probably look pretty appropriate too. Um, I'm going to say here um, rectus abdominis. 
Like I do need to hit some abdominal work. I can tell. I don't, I don't need a lot of it, but I need some of it. And then also waist control um, is another big one for me. So um, that that's uh, I think that's pretty much it. That I anyway. We've got our strengths, our weaknesses, and our OKs. So now what we need to do is take our total weekly training volume. And as, when it comes to designing your training split, all you're doing is taking your total volume and figuring out how you're gonna spend that. And so I have not thought about this at all, but I figure by about Wednesday of this week, I'm gonna be ready to get back into it. And so I wanna have a plan of attack. Now those first few sessions could really just be kind of like fuck around sessions. Like let's just get back into the groove of things here a little bit. Um, just because I still have a little bit of dysfunction to sort out just post show, like sleep still isn't great, et cetera. I'm kind of working around some macro stuff. I'm, I, I wouldn't say I'm tracking things on macros, but I have a plan. I'm following about 85% of the time that I put together. Um, my carbs are around 300. My fats are around 70 ish protein still around 260, something like that. So I'm just not hitting that solidly enough to where I can say like, this is my plan and this how this is how well it's working for me. I just, you know, it's, it's not that dialed in just yet. So, um, so what I, I'm going to do five days a week to start. Um, and I may knock that down to four. So, um, I think if I'm starting with five, like I would say the way that I wrapped up my, um, training pre-show is probably the way I should continue with it here. Um, which is going to be, pretty much two leg days, two back days, and one day for everything else. Um, and so um, I, will, I will say, you know, we'll do legs, we'll do back. Um, at this point, you know, either a rest day here or maybe we hit, um, I would call it, what, push and arms, chest, shoulders, biceps, triceps. That's a lot. Um, you know, what I was actually doing was putting biceps or actually arms with one of the back days here. What I might do is say one day will be a back workout. One day will be back plus just a little bit of bicep. I only need like two exercises, not much. Even maybe one if I do five sets of something, something like that. Um, and then the other day um, will be like a full on push day, like chest, shoulders and triceps. Uh, so I got a leg day, a full on back day. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say push and then I'll say rest and then we'll do a repeat of the first two so legs again and then back and bicep and then rest again so that gives me a nice easy seven day rotation here two leg days two back days one of those with biceps and then a full-on push day um, I like the idea of having a rest day before both of the leg workouts as well. I'll write this up on screen also just to uh, clarify a little bit. So what are these going to work look like here? Well, I got to keep in mind I'm 47 goddamn years old. And so my recovery is a little bit slower. Like I can't go in and throw like, okay, we're going to do three squat movements and a deadlift on this day. It's like, I'm going to die doing that. Like I got one good compound in me and the rest of it needs to be like, you know, less fatiguing stuff. So as far as specific exercises here, like I would say like there's one cornerstone exercise that I'd want to put in um, for uh, each of these leg days here. So this first one, I would say like it's probably going to be a hack squat. And the other one is probably going to be a hip thrust um, just because the, the glutes need more. That, that's one thing that I didn't, I forgot in my minus column here, glutes. So um, that needs to be a priority for sure. Um, and I think the, the details of this I can sort out later, but um, I think if I have just kind of like the major cornerstone movements figured out, um, like I would also say um, for one of my back days here, like the main movement there needs to be some kind of a wider grip chest supported row to try and hit the, uh, the mid back. Um, for push, it's going to be delt heavy, um, just because chest is fine, triceps are fine. So I would say probably 60% of the volume on that day will be shoulder related. Probably like three shoulder exercises, one for chest, one for triceps would be fine. I don't think it's going to need much more than that. Um, the other back and bicep day, I would focus on, um, 
honestly, for the primary, like I'd call it the cornerstone movement for that day. Um, I don't want to think about that, actually. Um, I might do like an upper back focus pull down, which is just a, a pull down, but it's where you lean backwards just a little bit more. So it puts more emphasis into the mid and lower traps. And uh, so it's not just exclusively like a lat pull down. And, um, you know, this, again, this is not too far off from what I was doing pre-show. So I don't need to reinvent the wheel. I already had my volume kind of sorted out where I needed it to be before. It's just now with calories being up, I'm going to have more of an opportunity to grow as opposed to just retain tissue. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, it was a pretty reasonable split design before. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. it as exciting as it would be to say like, okay, it's post-show. I'm going to shake up everything. It's like, well... You know, I'm going to turn a page in my logbook and I'm going to come up with um, some new exercises. But, you know, again, I'm not getting too cute with this stuff. Like the basics work. Um, I might explore going to a second gym one day as opposed to just like hitting the same one every day. Something like that just for a change of scenery. Um, but, uh, yeah, nothing too crazy here. Um, the other thing that I really need to focus on is, first of all, like with control on the hack squat and the hip thrust breath control and making sure that I don't get myself in a space where I'm losing my core lockout. Um, just because what I have found, um, as I'm focusing on progressive overload here is I'll put on enough weight to where now I can't control my core well enough. And then managing the hernia gets to be a little bit more difficult and tricky. So everything's going to be a little bit lighter, slower, more controlled and working in a little bit more of a confined weight range as far as progressive overload is concerned which is the smart way to do it, just because I need to keep healthier with it. Um, I'm not going to try, I don't think, um, I don't really want to go the surgical route to fix this stuff. That is the only way to fix it. The thing is, like, it's not really causing a problem right now. Like, the training stuff, I can work around it. Visually, does it bother me? Yes. But also, like, I've never had surgery in my life. I kind of like, it's like the Seinfeld no vomit streak. I kind of want to keep that streak going. Um, and uh, it's not bothering me so much where I'm like, I got to fix this um, and take myself out of the gym for four to eight weeks or however long the recovery is. Um, I've talked with my doctor about it as well. And he's like, yeah, if it's not bothering you right now, don't sweat it. He did say at some point it's going to become a problem. But so far it's been, you know, like 14 years and it hasn't really been a problem yet. So just waiting for the day. Um, the other thing I would say is I do need to focus on waist control as well. Um, there's no ab work in here. What I will probably need to do is focus on doing vacuums and a little bit of abdominal work a couple of days a week before a workout. If I save it for after, I won't do it. <laughs> I've, I've had enough evidence of that over the years to know what my weaknesses are. And that's one of them is be like, oh, whatever. I didn't do it at the start. It's fine. I'll skip it. So no, if I, if I don't do it at the start, that's not going to happen. So that's the strategy. That's the plan of attack. So when I come back here next week, we will have something um, in place where I might be able to show you like the logs of how this has started out for the first handful of days here. Um, we should have a good three or four training days under our belt. Hope to have some macros a little bit more dialed in to report on what I'm doing there. We'll talk about some meals going forward as well. That's it. That's all I got. So appreciate you hanging with me. Um, it's been a little bit of a rough stretch here. I know the updates have not been quite as fun or anything like that, but what I want to do is try and keep this stuff going into the growth season here. Um, just so that you guys can kind of follow my process along and uh, hopefully still get something out of it and use this to help kind of strategize for what you might be doing for yourself as well.